little scary, I'm leaving. Whoa! Man, someone got buried right there. Y'all feel that? That was my axles hitting the ground. Not good. So you see, if that wheel was pulling, you could get right out of here if we had the front locker working. It's pretty rare that you get uh, 37s high centered that badly. But when so I've got all my straps out and the come along is extended. So I got a toe strap, come along, and as you can see, I'm only about 15 feet short, which is how this stuff always goes. So if I had my 20 foot chain that I usually keep in the truck, we'd be good to go. I don't have it. <laughs> it's in the Tacoma or in the side by side or in the Chevy. Free spools totally knackered, stripped out. Uh, used a clevis to get better leverage to try to break it loose. That's not happening. And I have no other straps, but I do have, you know, 100 feet of strap right there. So the question becomes, how do you get 100 feet of strap off a thing you can't turn? You, uh, you cut it and you feed it off back and forth, unfortunately. I cut it after the big thick braid, save that nice hook, obviously. Um, so now what I can do is I can take it, that I cut it, I can fish it around, hopefully, and get off, you know, maybe 50 feet of it, tie it in a loop, a few feet of the rope off the spool. Uh, it involved making a uh, special tool out of a hot dog cooker, or some, whatever this was, to kind of go in there and grab the rope and yank it up using my, my winch bar. This rope was kind of bound on top of itself and it was up against the bottom of the spool. But now I got some coming off pretty good, so it looks like we're in good shape. It's a little, little uh, less sweet of a plan than I thought it would be, a little more work, but still better than admitting defeat and calling for backup. So now I just gotta feed it over here, over and over and over again until I get it off. And then hopefully this rotten ass rope is strong enough to actually uh, pull the truck out. I'm gonna double it up, still going at it. So you can see there is, I made it just the perfect length to be able to double it back twice, which is good because it puts less stress on the knots and that's not going to break. So that's the winch line. It's a uh, three, three X strong right there ish. Um, I tied some knots. I know it can get undone. So we'll see if it's strong enough to pull the truck out. It just barely, barely was long to do that. <laughs> so now here comes the, uh, Manual labor part 2.0. So what I like to do is once I get a little bit of tension on it to where the tires won't just sit there and spin themselves, I'll put the truck in drive to help me out a little bit. It feels pretty good. You don't want the tires just sitting there spinning, right? That's just gonna pack sand on top of the axle and create a suction. But if you're up against something and the tires can kind of help climb up on it, as long as they're not freewheeling, it's okay to put it in gear. Especially when you're by yourself and you don't have anyone else to you know, run the truck for you. Not that that usually helps, it usually makes things worse in my opinion, but, all right. That rear diff lock still. So you hear how it kinda bogged a little bit. Tires aren't spinning, so we're good to go. We can keep winching. I also have a pulley I can put on this one, um, which would require some re-rigging, but I now have enough rope to do it, so may end up using the pulley. All right, let's get a bit of tension on it. Walk back to the truck, give a little bit of gas, see if it wants to pop out of the hole it's in. Don't want to overstress it because I'm not using a pulley. I'm using some 10 year old winch line that is sketchy but seems to be holding just fine. Still feels pretty high centered. Oh, air conditioning.
you have it, folks. It's out of the hole. I try to unhook it, get out of the way, and see if I can get it out of here without any more come along in, because that's a pain in the ass. Oh. Fun, fun, fun. So that's out of the way. Let's see if I can't get this big girl out of here. And she's out just like that wasn't really that hard <sighs> oh so that was an exercise in uh, how to recover yourself when you have shit recovery gear you can usually do it if you get creative enough a little bit of suspension noise and I found the issue. Um, it's that fat. Yeah, look at that. So you're not supposed to see light through there. That's the um, that's the big lower control arm bushing that kind of controls the whole truck, if you will. Um, the bushing is gone. So you can see light through it. That's a that's a bad. Now the reason that happened is because I had some Iron Man 4x4 high offset bushings in there, and I was using it to push the front axle forward. I don't know, five eighths of an inch, and. Uh, it looks like uh, the front and rear bushings on the driver's side are completely disintegrated. They're still there on the passenger side, a little bit. So, <laughs> needless to say, need some new control arm bushings. But uh, no big deal, it'll make it home, no problem. Um, but uh, those things lasted probably five years of a lot of abuse. But I've got a super high flex setup now with no bushings, it'll flex to the moon. So I did a little work to the Land Cruiser recently. Figured we'd uh, take her out and see how she's doing. Uh, got the AC working, got a new drive shaft because John borrowed my other drive shaft. And so now I got his drive shaft and here's a spare. Um, did some wheel bearings, put a new alternator. Needs a new battery, but this one's working. This trail should be pretty wet though after the, uh, the storm. So Let's see if we can get in some situations where we actually need the locking differentials. This is a 1997 Lexus LX450, um, basically an 80 series Land Cruiser, the reach badge is Lexus. Um, there's really no difference. I got the Lexus because I wanted the locking diffs and that was the first one I found with the front and rear locking diffs factory. Um, I did re-gear it and put 529 gears. I did a part-time four-wheel drive conversion kit, which is why you saw me locking in the hubs. Um, that allows me to have two and four-wheel drive and not spend the drive shafts on the highway. Um, it's got about six inches left, um, and it's about six in the front, five in the rear, honestly. Um, OME J springs, uh, big 2 JN long travel shocks, uh, brackets for caster, all that jazz. Ooh! It's pretty good. All right, time to use the magic button. So that didn't take very long. So we'll engage the rear diff first. Rear diff engage. That might be all it takes. Um, so yeah, pretty much unstoppable because of the locking diffs, as you can see. No front diff required for that one. This hole appears bad though. No one ever really goes through it. But it's a good hole to get stuck in because there's a pole to winch out to. Uh, but also, I think I said I put 529 gears in this thing. Uh, 37 inch Goodyear Wrangler, MTR, Kevlar's, whatever. Um, what else did I do to it? Um, there's a tire in this one, that's not good. Ooh! Uh, custom lengthened uh, pan hard bars because of the lift to get the axle centered properly. Um, man, she just doesn't care. Oh, uh, front and rear bumpers, custom bumpers, really nice bumpers. Uh, the winch isn't working right now, it's an old winch, you need to get a new winch. It's just sat for a while. Um, yeah, but that's about it, I think. Uh, snorkel, obviously. Uh, the, one, the one thing I hate about this truck is the damn distributor cap. Um, 
it can go anywhere and it pretty much any depth of water except for the fact that the distributor will get wet every once in a while and it'll start misfiring usually it won't leave you stranded but that misfiring gets really annoying but it is a uh, it's a torque monster with those gears and everything eventually i want to put the lower low range gears in the transfer case um i'll probably gonna lower the front back down a little bit um right now i've got the, the two inch spacer on top of the j spring so it's pretty tall I'll, I'll probably get rid of that eventually um i was doing that to get you know better approach angle and stuff but most of the stuff i do now that's not really required pretty much amazing that anything on this truck works because I go through periods where I don't use it for six months at a time and it pretty much just sits and it's not like it's sitting in a garage it's sitting outside and there's water and all the diffs and the actuators and pretty much everything on this truck is just full of water most of the time so it's amazing that anything works I'm going in a circle right now to try to get that uh, front actuator to lock in but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen Woo! here we go They're really easy to rebuild. Um, I've only seen one I couldn't save just because it was so rusted out. There's nothing to it. But generally, what happens is there's a little tiny breather that goes to that front actuator, and it gets a little bit of water in it. Um, and then it, you know, your brushes start to stick, or since the magnets, uh, the case starts to grow, and the magnets break off of it. So you got to glue them back on the permanent magnets and the motor, stuff like that. Or you got to clean off the little wiper switch. Um, uh, so you see my hazard switch that's actually your four-wheel drive button there's a harness behind the dash it's the center diff lock button and when you do the part-time conversion it becomes your uh, so I'm in one-wheel drive here just trying to exercise everything um, when you do your part-time four-wheel drive conversion that becomes your front your four-wheel drive button oh yeah oh yeah you're real sideways right here no problem someone had just got stuck there yeah you can see where a regular truck got stuck here because one now that I'm in there exact holes there's one deep hole here and here by a regular truck I mean something without locking differentials so let's see if we can't get out of this situation so we block the rear differential through that hole oh yeah someone definitely got buried here we will mend the these ruts. Oh, come on! Let's see if the front end wants to lock in for us. Negative. The front locker is not operational. Oh, I'm digging a hole. Let's get a little cross rutted. Ah, drive out. <laughs> 